Best of r slash malicious compliance episode 30. This happened to me couple years ago. Sorry in advance, English is not my first or second language. Also, please feel free to delete it if this is inappropriate. Background story. I was hospitalized one night for a spine problem and waiting for surgery next morning. I was in a big double bedroom with another patient with couple of curtains separate two beds. The other patient was a stroke patient with no speaking ability or mobility and she has a caretaker, not patient's family. I was in agony so the doctor gave me something strong to fall asleep and it worked till 5am. My caretaker neighbor, for whatever reason start playing very loud music from her phone. I was jerking awake and pissed, it's 5 in the fucking morning, are you kidding me? Let me sleep. So I asked her politely to turn off the music or using a headphone. Surprisingly she just ignore me, not even bother to say a word. The music was so loud that the nurse came in and asked her to turn it down because patients from next room were complaining. The caretaker told the nurse her employer wasn't complaining so she is fine with the music. If there is a problem they should talk to her employer not her. Her employer wasn't able to speak and move. This is basically torture. Here is the malicious compliance part. I noticed my neighbor patient always go to physical therapy at 9 a.m. and her horrible caretaker would stay in the room and sleep till 11.30 a.m. Also, I made sure there is no other patients in next rooms and told the nurse what my plan is. Then I had my laptop and Bluetooth speaker with me. I started to play the whole 2016 Tomorrowland playlist and turned the room into a nightclub. The caretaker was so pissed and screamed at me saying she was sleeping and my music woke her up. Well. Tell your employer to fill a complaint against me to the hospital or let your employer talk to me directly. Since then, my journey in the hospital was 100 times easier. Thank you. Next. I used to work as a civilian employee for a military department, but it was like a normal office job in most respects so I don't think this is a good fit for our slash military stories. We prepared briefing packets for the personnel involved in upcoming military operations so that everyone knew what maneuvers would be performed, with which vehicles and in what order, and for every briefing we would probably make about 20 packets and each packet was probably about 30-40 pages. We would print one packet and then make copies on a standard photocopier, but the copier we were provided by our program office was just a light duty model that could not handle the intense load of making copies constantly to support multiple briefings a day. There was a rule that the machine had to make about 20,000 copies a month before the program office would pay for a heavier duty model. We would get our copier fixed and it would work for 3-4 days, during which time it would make about 14,000 copies but then it would fail and be down for weeks again. The copy machine repairman was out so frequently we joked about letting him leave his coffee cup there and join our coffee mess. If the machine was working properly we would easily exceed the 20,000 copy threshold for a heavier duty machine, but it never stayed working for more than a few days at a time after being fixed. The next time the machine broke down I decided to go use the copier outside the program office, tying up their machine. I started telling everyone else what I was doing and they played along, tying up the machine outside the program office for days. After a few days our machine was broken and the program office machine failed under the added workload too. Apparently, the program office didn't like the fact that their machine was always busy or broken now, because this time our copier wasn't just fixed, it was replaced with a machine that could actually handle the workload we needed from it. I don't know if this should count as revenge or just spreading discontent to those who need it most, an expression I learned on this job, but we got what we wanted. Edit, if this story seems familiar I posted in r slash regular revenge but was told it fits better here. Thank you. Next. I work at a fast food restaurant that is open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week save for one day of the year, and that's Christmas. I generally do everything there, from cashiering to running out orders, to cleaning, etc. So as you all know, Christmas has just come and gone, and as I mentioned before, that means the restaurant was closed. We all enjoyed closing the day prior and having the holiday off. It was nice. When I got in today, however, it was non-stop business. People were coming into the restaurant in droves, whole families, couples, just some really hungry people alone. It was absolutely hectic to the point that the trays we present to customers with ketchup, salt, pepper etc. were almost constantly empty. 
They had me running orders for a bulk of the morning, running up and down stairs for hours on end with no break, save for the moments I would go and grab water. I was exhausted, my legs hurt, and I was starting to get irritated. They told me to run outside and grab something we'd run out of in the store, then to stock trays, go run orders, wipe the trays, wipe that counter, run orders, take out that trash, trays, trash, orders, with almost no time in between telling me to do something, I was being told to do something else, it was enough to give me whiplash, go jump on the register, finally a moment to relax, I'll take some orders, take a breather, and be alright. Just a few minutes into that, one of my managers comes up to me and tells me, while in the middle of taking an order to sweep the lobby, okay, I finished the order and walked away from the counter to grab the broom and dustpan. Now there was only one other cashier besides me at the counter at the moment so I feel a little bad about that, but hey, I'm following orders at this point. I start sweeping the the lobby as I watch customers flow in, forming a line to the door, the screens in the kitchen fill up with orders. There's only one other person running all those orders. I hear them in the kitchen asking about me. Where's AJ? We need a runner. He's in the lobby. They come looking for me. And ask why I was out here. And not behind the counter helping with orders. Well. I was told to sweep the lobby. Thank you. Next. Recently remembered this story and thought it might be worth posting. This happened about 5 months ago. I had a co-worker who always considered himself smart and good at his job, but would never actually do any work or even show up half the time. He'd call out once a week minimum and when he didn't call out he was begging to be covered because he had to go out and party every other day instead of work. The only reason he wasn't fired is because he knew how to work around it. The days he is at work he's known for asking whoever dislikes slash knows him the least to help him with his work. When I was new I would help only to find he left to take a break and basically wanted me to do his job for him. This particular day, co-worker was closing with our boss and I was a midday shift to help them close well. My boss had a surprise meeting halfway through my shift that ended up taking a while and before he left he gave me some tasks I had to finish before I clocked out. No problem, they're decently easy but will take up the rest of my shift. As I'm doing these tasks... Co-worker comes up and starts talking with me. Co-worker, hey, are you busy? Me, not necessarily, but, co-worker, great, can you help me with something? Me, no, not really, I have other things to do. Co-worker, but you said you weren't busy, come on it'll take like 10 minutes. Me, then why haven't you finished it already? I'm sorry, but I need to do. Co-worker, you're the midday shift. Your job is to help the night shift and I'm currently night shift. I need help and you're not doing anything important. He goes on and on about being a team and helping each other and I get an idea. Okay co-worker, you need help and I'm not doing anything important? Sure thing. The night shifts are divided into three sections with different responsibilities. And co-worker was placed on the one with the most tasks and requirements after months of whining that he deserved to be there. He shows me what I have to do and he has basically done nothing in the few hours he's been at work. He leaves happy thinking I'll do all his work and he can take a nice long break. And I do exactly that. I get to work. I do his tasks, but I do them all a little wrong and at a slow enough speed I don't exactly complete them all. Examples include stocking shelves, dating products, cleaning spoilage and more. Co-worker comes back and I tell him that I did it all and he walks away again, not even checking the quality of my job. This lined up perfectly with my boss coming back from his meeting and asking for an update. I explain how I couldn't finish the original tasks because co-worker had me help him. My boss is already annoyed and asks for a clear play-by-play so I tell him how co-worker left me to do his job without him there to properly guide me as I had never done his job before. Several other people do this specific job and have taught me already but my boss didn't know that. My boss runs to co-workers department and sees how everything is off by just enough to be bothersome and will need to be mentioned in an email so no one gets mad at my boss. He tells me for my first time I did well, but I really need training and he can't believe co-worker left me alone to do all this. My boss tries to ask me to complete some of the original tasks. But oops helping co-worker took up the last bit of my shift. I clock out happier than when I clocked in. The day after I heard my boss chewed co-worker out and told him he can't ask new people for help anymore. 
I also see that my co-worker was taken out of that department for all future shifts and placed in the easier ones. He ended up quitting soon after anyway, but it was fun getting him into a little trouble before he left. Thank you. Next. I used to work at a Chinese buffet in a shopping center near my hometown. The very first day I was informed that if you wished to go on a break you had to do it outside of the restaurant because apparently seeing an employee taking a break can look unprofessional to a customer. We were having a very busy day and my supervisor slash trainer came in just when the majority of customers had already left and mostly of the work was done. We were both just stood in the kitchen and the only thing left to clean was literally a couple plates and a small tray of cutlery. Chefs were on food prep to get late night orders ready and just to look busy. We both decided to leave the few pots soaking and go outside for a cigarette. This would have taken about 5 minutes out of out day but our manager decided that both of us were now on a break and told us to do just that. After 20 minutes of our break soups gets a call. A couple minutes after we had left about 50 customers had come in all at once and the kitchen was getting swamped with orders and all the sinks and trolleys were full to capacity. No other cleaners on shift that day. We informed the manager that we couldn't enter the restaurant until our break was over which was another half hour. She hung up immediately and told us to get back the second our break ended. We walk in as promised and there are no customers in the restaurant at all. Why? Because they quite literally did not have any clean plates or cutlery left and all the kitchen equipment was dirty. The chefs were already cleaning the ovens and waitresses tallying up orders and calculating total tips for the day. This was 4 hours before the restaurant was due to close. She decided to fire us both the moment we walked in from our break for gross negligence. We get a call from the district manager the next morning informing us that we wasn't fired. Matter of fact she had been fired as she was grossly incompetent at her job. Also got told that due to her piss poor rotor management no cleaners or waitresses were scheduled for an entire week with only her and the chefs being on the rotor so the company was left with two options. Either close the store for that week or be forced to pay what is essentially 2x the normal salary for nearly every employee the restaurant had so they could stay open. Thank you. Next. A few years back I was working for a massive corporation a representative stationed in various hotels. My company essentially contracted desks and various hotel lobbies where my team was staffed for a 9 hour shift. At some point the hotels with whom we were affiliated decided it was unprofessional for us to be seated at stools behind our desks during our shifts and got rid of them. This was a problem for one person on my team who had severe arthritis in their hips. He raised concerns and asked for an exception but was told that if hotel staff wasn't permitted to sit, neither could our staff. He met with our company's HR, whose hands were tied since they couldn't change the hotel's company policy and didn't want to lose their contracts. Our team was upset on his behalf and looked into it, only to discover our state law mandates that any position that can be done in a seated position be permitted to be done in a seated position if required by the employee. We brought this law to our HR, but again, they couldn't force the hotel's hand. They didn't want to rock the boat and risk losing the contracted space in the hotel lobbies, so they asked our team if we'd accept a deal that permitted us to take a seated break for 15 minutes of every hour, which worked for our teammate and was accepted. I didn't have as much trouble standing for my shifts, so I didn't take advantage of this policy. One day, I was staffed at hotel in an extremely heavy traffic area of my city. At 4.45, having not taken a break aside from my lunch and not having had a single guest to talk to in hours, I decided to leave and get a head start on traffic. The hotel complained I had left my shift early for which my boss issued me a write-up. I reasoned that I hadn't taken a single 15-minute break in months, and the 15 minutes I took were during a time in which there had not been any work for me to do for hours. My boss responded that my shift ended at 5pm, and under no circumstances was I permitted to leave before then. It was considered leaving a shift without approval and not a break, since I didn't return to work afterwards. He docked my pay the 15 minutes I had been gone. Very well. I never left work before 5 again, but every single day, you better believe I took a 15 minutes break at 45 minutes past the hour, every hour of every shift. Apparently, my company was more okay paying me for 2 hours of break time every day than for 15 minutes at the end of a single day. Thank you. Next. As a freelance designer, getting content from clients was almost always the hardest bit. 
One client asked me to design them a flyer for an event they were running. Fine, no problem. After a few weeks, with the deadline getting closer, I still hadn't had any info from them, so I put together a design using dummy copy for the date, time and event details and sent it over with the hope they'd just fill in the blanks and send it back. They didn't. The afternoon before the mailing was supposed to go out, I got an angry call from them asking why it hadn't gone to print. I explained it couldn't go to print because they hadn't actually given me any information. Oh no, we won't decide all that until the board meeting next week. But that flyer has to go out tomorrow. Are you sure? There's no information on it. Yes, print it. It's fine as it is. Okay, if you're really sure. Yes. The next day I got a very angry phone call from the client's boss asking why the flyer sent to thousands of people was full of lurem ipsum. Well, 